Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Tim. Welcome to Vintage Food Farm. Today we are going to show you why we absolutely love raised garden beds in the veggie garden. So if you've watched our last few videos on the floods, you will know that we have had massive amounts of water after Cyclone Jasper. So Cyclone Jasper was a Category 2 cyclone um, that came across the coast just north of Cairns, mainly at Woodjul Woodjul, um, but it affected Woodjul Woodjul, north of Woodjul Woodjul, uh, Port Douglas, Palm Cove, Cairns and right down to Ingham. It was huge. The thing that was the most devastating about this cyclone was actually the rain. And when we got that amount of rain over a week and we were flooded in, we had no electricity except for our generator, so we were absolutely fine. But we realised after the rain how fantastic our raised garden beds were. We had passion fruits that were out of the raised garden beds. It's so amazing. It's like aliens or something with all these pods hanging down. Their roots got waterlogged, their leaves dropped off. Then because the cockatoos could see all the fruit, they came in and ate the lot. And you can have a look at this before Cyclone Jasper and this is after Cyclone Jasper. The cockatoos don't eat all the fruit. They rip every single piece off and they take one bite out of it and then they throw it on the ground. So it's the whole wastefulness of it that is really frustrating. Cockatoos are beautiful, we love them. We want to share, they don't want to share. So basically our beautiful passion fruits went absolutely pear-shaped because of the amount of water. Hang on. Don't you mean passion fruit shaped? Yeah. <laughs> but once we realised that the chickens love eating the passion fruit, it was a little bit better. So we take all the passion fruit that the cockatoos have thrown on the ground um, and we feed it to the chickens and they absolutely love it. At least someone gets to enjoy them. Oh, I'm sorry, you want to be hand fed. I apologize. Nope. Yep, you do.
So this is what makes us okay about the devastating situation with the passion fruit on the clothesline because the chickens still get to eat the passion fruit and make us beautiful super eggs. But I will show you a passion fruit that is in the main veggie garden in a raised garden bed and it was not affected by the water at all because the roots had such good drainage. And that was the same with papaya, that is the same with a lot of our herbs and vegetables. It was incredible how that extra drainage that you get in raised garden beds really helps in the tropics and anywhere where you have a massive amount of water or rainfall in a short period of time. Did you come to say hello? Did you come to say hello? Hello? Hello little chicks. Hello little Keats. What you doing? Have you come for a visit? So I'll show you the passion fruit inside the raised garden beds. You can see we've got lots of tomatoes still growing. So the tomatoes um, really copped it in the water, but there's enough still left that they will come back. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see what can withstand the worst floods since 1977 and how much being in a raised garden bed helped it. I'm just so impressed. So these are wing beans up here. You can see beautiful fresh wing beans. And then in amongst the wing beans are all the passion fruit. And look at how lush and beautiful and green. And we've got some more flowers just being pollinated right now. So many fruit. And that is because it is all planted in a raised garden bed with much better drainage than if it was just in the ground. Incredible. What are you doing? Picking some tomatoes to share with the chickens. Oh, good. So you can see the tomatoes aren't really healthy at all. And I'll show you over the other side where you can really see the water damage. But they survived and they will come back. Look, there's some fresh ones coming up here. And tomatoes are something that we eat every day. Hello, Mr. Nussie. You guys like tomatoes? There's prawn dumpling, roti, pepper, all eating cherry tomatoes. They love them. So this is why it's so important that we grow heaps of fruit and vegetables because it's not just for us, it's for the chickens as well. But I'll show you how badly these tomatoes went. So this was all beautiful lush tomatoes and look at it now. So it got totally waterlogged, but look here, new shoots, new fruit, new shoots so it's a bit devastating but it's all going to come back and it's all going to be fine and they will be okay because of the raised garden beds we had over one and a half meters of rain at least in a week so it was a huge amount and they suffered but because of that drainage because their roots weren't rotting in that water for that whole week they survived so the parsley is also struggling but you can see that it's got new shoots there now all new shoots but look at this all brown but at least it's coming back so the parsley died off but it's coming back the mint has all got tiny little leaves but it's coming back 
the rosemary, the basil. Look at that rosemary. The rosemary actually didn't suffer at all. So the mint is starting to come back nicely. The garlic chives are beautiful. The spring onions are okay. What are you eating? Mint and tomato. <laughs> mm. Middle Eastern. Mm, it's really good. Look at this, all starting to get new growth. Hello, sweet leaf. Hello, little chicks. Hello, little keats. This one here, the one that's scared at the back, is half guinea fowl, half chicken, which is extremely rare, but possible, and it happened. And its name is Jasper. Um, she is named, she or he, I think it's a she, is named after Cyclone Jasper. So we've got papaya that are in garden beds, in raised garden beds. And then we've got papaya that are outside of the garden in the chicken run that are sitting in um, the ground. Because we had such masses of water, the papayas that were in the ground got really waterlogged. And I'll show you that the same way as they did with the passion fruit. But look at these ones that were in the uh, raised garden beds. They are so healthy. They have heaps of fruit. Their leaves are really lush and beautiful. So they're still not the healthiest they've ever been because they still had a lot of water, but they survived so much better than those in the ground. And I'll show you some in the ground. So it's still got its fruit, but you can see that the leaves are all stumpy. And this one's only just starting to get its leaves back now. So they will be okay, it's all right, but um, they certainly found it harder with that amount of water than what they did when they were in the raised garden beds. You can even see this little baby papaya in the garden here is so healthy. So here's another little baby papaya that has survived beautifully. I'll just show you here too, these passion fruit were lush and covered in fruit. And you can see now they are almost dead, but they will come back because they do have more shoots on them. But that was because they are sitting in the ground as opposed to the raised garden bed. Now I'm gonna take you and show you everything that did really well in that massive amount of rain in the raised garden beds, which is very satisfying. Okay, so I don't know if you can see properly, but pumpkins are starting to come up. They did come up, the rain killed them back, and now they're back up again. Loofah has done amazingly. Look at this loofah vine. And we've got some massive loofahs coming up. And more flowers, and you can see the fruit starting to form there. That one's had it, but we'll still be able to use it for seeds. So this first bed here was pretty badly affected, um, but What's happened is the Okinawa spinach has taken over, which I'm gonna to have to actually pull a bit out. So Okinawa spinach does very well in the rain. And then this spinach has died off everywhere. You can see it's all brown and mucky, but that is starting to come back now too. So asparagus doing very, very, very well. Ground apple, very, very, very well. Look at this, so lush and beautiful. And that papaya is doing okay. So I'll show you a ground apple in the ground. So we're really happy with them. Look at the sweet potato. These guys went absolutely nuts. Look at this. They, every day we pick this for the chickens and it's still growing. Look, there's a rogue ginger in the middle. Look at this. Do you want to feed some to the chickens? Yeah. Look at them all 
coming. What have I got? These sweet potato leaves are so healthy for them too and I'm sure that what's, that's what makes our eggs taste so good. Do you like sweet potato leaves? Chickens? Look at that, yum! Do you know what they like more than the sweet potato leaves? Is the stalks. They absolutely love them. They grab them, they snap them and they eat them. Hey guys! What you got? They also like these roots that are coming off the branches. So imagine you can just grow as much green as your chickens can eat and I'll show you sweet potato that's not growing in a garden bed as well. So definitely you can still grow sweet potato everywhere in the tropics, but they just do really well when they've got that extra drainage. So the other thing is we have just about everything in pots as well. And the reason we have it in pots is so that when neighbors and friends and family say to me, oh, I want tree lettuce, I want this, I want that, we've got it to give to them. But it was a really good backup in a cyclone in case things went wrong with something in the garden. Avocados, West Indian limes, and I'll tell you something here now. I'll, we'll talk about raised garden beds and the benefits of them and some of the um, downsides later. But one of the things we use to fill our garden beds with is mill mud. And I stand by mill mud. It is so good, isn't it? Mill mud is absolutely amazing. It's cheap, it's nutritious. And I'll show you the difference between seeds that we planted in mill mud and seeds that we planted in cheap um, stuff from the hardware store. This, see that black, see that black soil? We planted this West Indian lime by seed in this black soil and look at it. This one we planted in cheap potting mix slash cow manure. This one in mill mud. This one in cheap hardware store cow manure slash potting mix type stuff. So incredible difference. So asparagus doing really well, ground apples doing really well, sweet potato doing really really well and here are our native raspberries. And one of the main reasons that we love raised garden beds is because if you have native raspberries, they will take over your yard. They will take over everything if you cannot contain them. So you need to be able to mow around them. You don't have to have a raised garden bed to do that, but it makes it really easy that we can whip a snipper around and keep them under control. So we get kilos and kilos and kilos of native raspberries off this, but we do have to, you can hear those cockatoos. looking for passion fruit. These are blueberries and they are doing very well. That's the papaya we saw before. Sawtooth coriander. So the sawtooth coriander struggled in all of that water but it didn't die. So it's now coming back, it's going to seed and it will be back in no time at all because you cannot keep sawtooth coriander down. So I'm going to show you here two casualties of papayas. So these are in a soggy part of the ground and look at this, they just rotted off. Oh that still might come back. It might come back. Yeah. So that still could come back. This one. This one will come back but look, look. at it. Look at it, like totally just ruined. But it's already coming back. Yeah, yeah, it is. Around this side. So yes, they struggled, but they will come back. But still, much better to have them with really good drainage. So even if you mound them up. In this garden bed, the galangal and the ginger starting to come up now, which is the right time of year for the ginger to come up. 
turmeric. So the turmeric, the gallon gal, the ginger is going great guns. What hasn't come back well? Look, here's a ring in papaya. Another little really healthy papaya. What hasn't come back yet after the rain is the cardamom. I haven't given up yet, but it is very scary because I love it, but we will see what happens. This is something that we absolutely love, which is betel leaf. If you go to Cambodia or Vietnam or Thailand, you will see that they wrap lots of things in it. You can eat it fresh. You can take minced meat, usually beef, you can load it up with garlic and lemongrass and fish sauce and a little bit of sugar, wrap the beef up in the betel leaf and grill it on the coals and it is absolutely beautiful. And then when it's cooked, you wrap it in tree lettuce, dip it in some dipping sauce, mwah. Hello, dumpling. Hello. How you going? Lemon basil. Beautiful lemon basil. Hello. Hello, Mr. Rotty. Hello, Mr. Nasi. Are you going to attack me? This is all bitter melon, which is nice if it's stuffed with pork mince and steamed. And then this is tree lettuce. And this is one of the best things we grow. Not only for oh, grasshopper. Oh, missed it. I always try and catch the grasshoppers for the chickens. Look at all this tree lettuce. So much tree lettuce. And these are wing beans. All of these wing beans. Some oversized wing beans, but they'll be good for seeds. Wing beans, wing beans. There's one that's drying out. There's one that's dried out. And you can see the seeds inside. And if we chuck them on the ground, we will get more wing beans. And this is Kang Kong. Kang Kong is also known as water spinach. So obviously that does well in the rain. More tree lettuce, more tree lettuce more tree lettuce so you can see the tree lettuce got knocked over because of the weight of the rain probably but look at this it's getting all new shoots along it more wing beans this is pandan which is a beautiful flavor for southeast asian dishes Look at all these chilies. Look at them. So many. And that goes right up to the top. I think I need to make some hot sauce. Look at it. Tons and tons and tons. And then this is Vietnamese coriander, which is so lucky that we have this because the sawtooth coriander didn't do well in the rain so much Vietnamese coriander so cool so yummy more Kang Kong more Cape gooseberries this is the taro so taro is like a purple yam type thing and it tastes absolutely beautiful and we planted this a couple of months ago and you can see there's already, that's basil there, but baby taro coming up everywhere. And that's Thai basil. And this is a cape gooseberry with the gooseberry inside. Yum. Hello, little Pepper. Hello, Pepper. How you going? I've just got to watch where Nasi is because he is in a foul mood. And then if you have a look up the top you can see we've also got lots of the little bird's eye. But look, that's, that's all dead there. So that has been affected by the rain. But you can see there's tons of bird's eye chilies. Yum. More tree lettuce, more tree lettuce. 
It's all coming back really well. There's a tree lettuce. So that can be used as a salad, as lettuce, or it can be used as an Asian green as well. More Kangkong. There's a reason they call it water spinach. Look at it going nuts. More tomatoes. Have a look at how much chickens love tree lettuce, as much as we do. Yum. Look at that. Look at that. yum -o. And guinea fowl like it. So one of the things we have to think about living in far north Queensland is when there isn't a weather event, and it may not be a cyclone or a flood, it might just be the normal wet season, the roads get cut off. The supermarkets don't get their loads in and we run out of things a lot. So when we're planting and when we're gardening, we always try and put things in that if we couldn't go and get some chicken food, if we couldn't get food from a supermarket for some reason, we can actually survive with what we have. And we actually grow enough food right now to feed us and our chickens. So I'll show you just another couple of things that are doing really well which is this lemongrass that I planted. So we use a lot of lemongrass so that's doing really well. This is a Malabar spinach that has popped up. So I've got heaps of Malabar spinach growing in the back in the chicken run in rounds of wire so that as it grows and pokes through the wire they can eat it. It's called a salad bar, a chicken salad bar, but they can't eat it all. So somehow, probably those cockatoos um, have made that self-seed. Also I let the chickens in here sometimes so maybe they've eaten some of the seeds and then pooped them out on the ground here um, and nature has given us a new Malabar spinach plant. So sorrel is doing really really well that's a beautiful citrusy leaf these are pea eggplant from thailand and laos and cambodia and probably vietnam as well cape gooseberries mixed in here with kangkong more thai basil more cape gooseberry They are so good. They're like the fruitiest, tangiest, sweetest tomato you could ever have. So beautiful, savoury or sweet dishes. The other thing that suffered in the worst floods since 1977 was the cucumelons, but they are coming back, thank goodness. So you can see here, they're all coming back. And it will only be a couple of weeks and we will have a truckload of cucumelons back, which is so lucky. Hello, Sheila. What you doing? What you doing? This is another one that's doing well, which is the fish mint. You can see in here. So if you ever have a Vietnamese bun sao, or a Cambodian bun chow, which is the yellow pancake. So beautiful with pork and, and um, bean shoots and um, herbs in it. You can eat that with fish mint, Thai basil, um, any herbs you want, absolutely beautiful. Just look at the leaves on this loofah. There's a baby loofah there now. More baby loofahs. So if you pick loofah early, you can use it as just like a zucchini. You can put it in anything. If you leave it to grow really big like we are and you dry them out, then you get the loofah sponge, which you can use in the shower or as a dishcloth or a scrubber, whatever. There's lots of people who say, why do you need raised garden beds? And the answer is you don't need raised garden beds. They are expensive. You have to fill them, um, which means you've got to think about what you're going to use to fill them to probably reduce the cost of just filling them with, with soil. Um, there's some downsides. If it's really hot, they may need a little bit more water because they have really good drainage, which is an upside, but it also could be a downside. But the upsides of raised garden bed gardening way outdo 
the downsides. So I'll just list off the reason why we love raised garden bed vegetable gardens. Um, the drainage is improved. You can control the soil that you put in there. So we fill the, the bottom half up with rubbish and sticks and stones and whatever. Then we put the mill mud in on top. Then over time, as the soil drops, we take the leaf litter from the ground outside the chicken coop, which is tons and tons of, of leaf litter, mixed with chicken poo and bits of food and all sorts of bits of waste. And we top the beds up with that. So for us, it is very, very cost effective to maintain them over time rather than going and getting loads of soil um, and filling it up all at once. So this is leaf litter that Tim is raking up and it is leaf litter filled with chicken poo. So we will just get a bucket of that every, I don't know, a couple of times a week or once a week and put that into the raised garden beds and slowly just build them up. That is beautiful soil. Hello, Pepper. Hello. You're getting the bugs. This is little Pepper. She's lovely and she loves to be picked up. She comes up to us every single morning and asks to be picked up, don't you? Hey? As opposed to that little nasty rooster, Nasi, Nasi Lamac, hey? He's a bit of a bother and so loud. So Tim's got a whole bucket of this chicken poo leaf litter stuff. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? Hello, little dumpling. Hello, little pepper. Hello, little rotty. Hello, little nasty nuzzy lamac. Are you gonna chase me? Are you gonna chase me? Are you having a good day? I can let you back in the veggie garden now we've finished filming. Come on. You coming, Sheila? So we're gonna put it into this one here. So this is all those dead tomatoes. We're just gonna shove back in there. This is how we garden. And then tip some stuff on top of it. And we just do that all the time and let the rain rot it down and fill it up and it gets all the nutrients and all the leaf litter and it's free. The other thing that we do is we have a spare garden bed over there, which is sort of like our soil preparation area. So we fill that with old cardboard that doesn't have any plastic coating on it. We fill that with grass clippings, any branches, waste products, anything that is safe and healthy to break down, we chuck in that garden bed and that provides us with potting mix and with dirt to top up the gardens. Um, I'll show you here, Tim is putting uh, lawn clippings into it and that will all rot down and sink and we just keep adding and adding and adding and adding and then we might even put a couple of buckets of um, our own homemade special liquid fertilizer on it just to give it a kick start. The other thing that's fantastic is that you have so many less weeds just because of the physical barrier between the grass and the lawn around or the garden around and the vegetable garden so we can whip a snipper around the edge um, there are still grass seeds and weed seeds that come in from the air or the birds or whatever, but it is significantly better than if, if we were growing on the ground in the tropics, we wouldn't be growing because it would be taken over in a couple of weeks by grass and weeds. The benefit of growing stuff up here is it grows so quickly. It is so efficient. However, so are the weeds. So if you're in a raised garden bed, you've sort of taken all of that um, vegetable away from the potential for weed seeds you still get some but it's still a hell of a lot easier the other thing is is not having to bend down I can't tell you how much nicer it is to weed a garden or to pick or to harvest or to plant when you can do it standing up rather than squatting down or kneeling down or bending down 
so much easier. It's all not 100% proof, but it certainly makes life a lot easier. So it makes it easier to weed, but you still get some weeds, not too many. Um, as far as pests go, it just seems to stop things like rats and bandicoots and possums going to town. So we do get some damage from pests, but the whole garden doesn't get wiped out like it would well, like it did when we first moved in and decided we were going to plant a garden just on the ground with no fence around it, we woke up in the morning and we literally had no garden. The whole thing was eaten by bandicoots, wallabies, possums, rats, you name it. Now that we've got the fence and the raised garden beds, the damage is minuscule um, and stuff grows so quickly that if there is any damage, we don't even know about it. So up here, especially because it is so wet and the soil is sort of so undisturbed, it's like virtually it was rainforest, um, it is a lot easier for plants to grow their roots down easily in a garden bed, so the soil is not as compacted. Um, so because it, you can get much better root growth, whatever is happening down below is happening on top and you get much better fruit production, vegetable production. Um, your plants have much more access to more nutrients and they're just healthier and happier, full stop. Probably the biggest downside of raised garden beds is actually the cost of setting them up. And lots of people say that if you are paying for raised garden beds, then you never actually make the money back in what you would have saved buying vegetables from the supermarket. I am here to say that is absolute rubbish. We have already paid for those garden beds and the soil that's in them and any plants and by the next year we would have paid for it multiple times over. We eat healthier. We don't pay for fuel to go to the supermarket to buy a bunch of mint. We eat so many different fruits and vegetables. We're challenged every day how to incorporate all this beautiful, fresh, healthy food into our diet. Yes, it cost us a lot of money to set it up, but as far as lifestyle goes, as far as food security for the future, if we ever have Armageddon, as far as normal life in tropical far north Queensland or even in the top of the Northern Territory, in the wet season, the roads get cut off. The food doesn't come through. You have all this food in your garden, which is fresher and tastier and probably healthier than what you could buy in the supermarket. Even if you're thinking environmentally, the fact that we just, I mean, food miles, we're talking food centimetres. We literally walk outside our back door to the vegetable garden. We eat out of that garden just about every single meal. And I used to go to the supermarket multiple times a week. I would get in our car, I would drive to the supermarket, I would buy all the packaged food, we don't have to do that nearly as much. We still do it, we still buy things at the supermarket, but it has reduced drastically. And with inflation and with the cost of everything in the supermarket going up, I look at a bunch of herbs and I nearly cry in the supermarket. I am so grateful that we grow our own stuff. And you don't need to have a massive block and a massive big vegetable garden to grow enough to supplement your food. You could go and get the big plastic tubs from Bunnings and drill some holes in the bottom and put a couple of bags of potting mix in it. And if you choose the right plants, you can grow so much food so easily. This is so disappointing, but let me show you one thing that will make up for all of this. Come with me. So that's our first dragon fruit. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hanging baskets of dragon fruit um, that are all about to fruit. So we're really, really, really excited about the dragon fruit. I've had messages from people all over the world saying, have your dragon fruit started to fruit yet? And every time I was like, no, 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 no. But then when we got cam back from Cambodia, we saw that we had started to fruit. So we're very excited. What I don't like about growing dragon fruit in hanging baskets 
is the cost of the hanging baskets and also the long-term durability of them. So I've come up with an idea because we had so many cuttings fall off when we moved them for the cyclones, I'll show you. So this is just a few of them. So each of these, they've got prickles, can be turned into a dragon fruit plant. So to me, this is the opportunity to plant tons and tons and tons of dragon fruit, but I don't want to pay for hanging baskets. Um, and I'm also not sure how many years we'll get out of them. I think it's worth it, but we'll just see what happens. But what I'm going to do in the future is this. This is a $2 milk crate from the dump shop in Cairns. I am going to line that with weed mat. I'm going to fill it with our homemade potting mix from the garden bed over there that you saw Tim putting the grass into. And we are going to tie wire onto it and make it into a hanging basket. And I'm going to grow dragon fruit in hanging milk crates. Now I know that's not for everyone. Um, if you've got a beautiful house, which is all designed, you might not want to do that. Um, you could use black milk crates, it might be a bit more eye pleasing, um, but I like the look of old recycled stuff. I like using it, I love not paying for things whenever we can. So I am really excited to get out some wire and make some hanging baskets for some dragon fruit and I'll show you when we do that, we'll do a, we'll do a video on it. Um, and even just to, to hang them out in the garden under a tree, I'll show you here. So these are dragon fruit here, growing. So you can see there is some weeds there, but not too bad, they'll survive. And these are growing, just hanging from a tree in a hanging basket. So here are some more dragon fruit that we have in hanging baskets. And you can see if we broke off any of these pieces, that's an extra plant. So imagine if instead of a $20 hanging basket, which is still not that bad, I used a $2 milk crate and a bit of weed mat and 50 cents of wire, that would be the best. So I'm definitely going to do that. I am so excited. I cannot wait to do it. It's so hot, I thought I'd give the chickens the um, watermelon we got from Christmas for, got for Christmas from Rusty's. Yep. Um, it's frozen a bit, but they'll love it. Well, let me put it down. Okay. Chuk, 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 chuk. So Tim is feeding the chickens a watermelon that we had for Christmas um, that actually got stuck up at the back of the fridge and half froze, but they absolutely love it. Cold? Can that cool you down on this hot day? Come around this way. You having a good day, Sheila? Hey? So that is it. That is why we love raised garden beds so much. There are so many benefits to it. It is a really rewarding way to grow your own food. If you feel like it, and only if you feel like it, like and subscribe. But most importantly, stay calm in the farm. Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Tim. Welcome to Vintage Food Farm. Today, we are going to tell you why we absolutely love... Whoa! Right... <laughs> no, that's too much like you can... No, just stay there and I can move around to okay. the right place. Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Tim. Welcome to Vintage Food Farm. Today, we are going to show you why we absolutely Whoa. love... Too early. Do it again. <laughs> I'll just need to stay until you say love. 
Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Tim. Today we are going to show you why we absolutely love Whoa! using raised garden beds. Yep. Part of some wildlife to access. Um, we have, what do we have? Not bunyips. Wallabies. 